Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today we're inside a 2014 Cadillac CTS V Sport. We're taking a look at the LCD instrument cluster as well as Cadillac Q in this video. If you're interested in the complete review on the V Sport itself, then go ahead and click the banner at the bottom of your screen. Right now we're taking a look at the 12 inch LCD instrument cluster. This is available in a number of Cadillac models, so if you've found this video because you're looking at an XTS or a regular CTS, then don't worry, this is the correct video for you. If you found this video because you're looking at Cadillac Q and something like uh, the SRX, then go ahead and skip ahead to the Cadillac Q section of the review because the SRX does not have this LCD instrument cluster as an option at this exact moment. The first thing you need to know about the LCD instrument cluster is that it's controlled by a multi-way joystick style button arrangement right on the steering wheel. It's very easy to use and the interface is very intuitive. The next thing to know about this system is that it offers a variety of different layouts which really sets this apart from the full LCD instrument cluster that you'll find in Jaguar and Land Rover products because those really just imitate standard old analog gauges and this one has a variety of different layouts. Personally, I prefer this particular layout, which Cadillac calls the enhanced layout, so we'll be spending most of our time looking at this. Much of what I'm going to talk about in this layout also applies to the other layouts. It's just that the information is rearranged in those different layouts. The reason I like the enhanced layout is because it gives you an awful lot of information in a very logical layout. Right up here we have the navigation map. So this is actually pulled from the navigation system and it is a live map and it shows you a close up of where you are and you can see this at all times. So it doesn't change in this layout and it doesn't matter whether you have the Cadillac Q system that's in the dashboard in the center console set to the navigation system or anything. Next we have three separate areas. This area, this middle area, and this far right area that can have different information displayed in them. Let's go over to the left side so we can see what options we can cycle through. We have two different trip computers available, fuel range, instantaneous fuel economy, average speed, vehicle timer, turn arrow gives you navigation instructions, so your next turn whether it's left or right, etc. Distance to your destination if you have one programmed in, speed limit on the current road, battery voltage, oil life, tire pressure, and then we're right back to the trip again. The same information can be displayed on this right side screen, cycles through the same number of options, so you have the option of having two of those options in that list displayed at the same amount of time. We always have the fuel range displayed in this particular layout, as well as a graphic representation of the fuel level. The layout has a large central digital speedometer, and you'll find status and warning icons displayed around that speedometer. For instance, we have our cruise control information right there, and then we have the drive mode select, which will display on the screen, so if we select two ring, You'll notice that this little car with the gear icon turns off, and if we select snow and ice, then the little icon will appear back again, and this time it has a little snowflake in it. The larger central area of the screen can be used for a variety of different functions. Right now we're on the audio option, and we have almost full control over our audio system right here in this LCD instrument cluster by the steering wheel. So we can change our source, we can actually browse the media, you can browse specific playlists if you want specific playlist, specific items, and then you can select that particular item to start playing. This is really very advanced compared to all the other systems out there on the market. Chrysler's Uconnect won't do this. You won't find this in the Maserati Ghibli, which also uses Chrysler Uconnect. You won't find this in many of the other systems out there. BMW system offers a decent amount of this functionality, but it doesn't quite come to this level. We have access to a reasonable number of phone commands right here in this interface as well. We can see recent calls, browse our phone book, as well as dial favorites. Very similar in the navigation, we can resume the route, voice prompts on or off, and we also get a compass right here, or map if you have the navigation active. As you can see in this view, not all the views offer dual displays for the information that we see right over here on the left. This particular one, for instance, doesn't give you that option. In the center console, you will find the most hotly contested feature of Cadillac Q, and it's this touch button arrangement right here. None of these are physical buttons, so these are all touch buttons, just like the buttons on either side of the screen are touch buttons as well. The system does give you haptic feedback, so when you hit a button, it vibrates gently so you know that you've actually pressed that particular option. Like the screen, you can drag your finger along the sliders like this to change your volume, as well as change your fan. You can go up and down using the sliders, which is kind of handy. 
Unlike the first time I tested this system, this time the system never got my finger touches wrong. So even after a week with this system, I never had any time where the system went haywire and started adjusting the volume or the fan control as if I was touching the display. And that did used to happen in the first generation of this system, but fortunately General Motors has spent a decent amount of time tweaking the software and it looks like they've gotten it right. On the bottom of this panel, there's a touch sensitive area that allows you to open the screen. It is motorized and inside you will find a single USB port. The system has three USB ports total. There are two in the center console and there's one right here in this hidden little cubby. Simply touch that to close it again. We're now taking a look at the 8-inch LCD that's the heart of the Cadillac Q system. If you've used a tablet computer before, especially an Android tablet, then this interface should be very familiar to you for a number of reasons. First off, this uses a capacitive touchscreen, not a resistive touchscreen, which means this is a single sheet of plastic all the way across from here, all the way across the screen, and all the way to over here. So there's no gap like you'd find in every other touchscreen that's out there. So it looks and feels like a regular touchscreen. Resistive touchscreens, which are the alternative, actually use a physical membrane that detects your touch. So it actually flexes when you press on the screen and they have sort of a matte finish and it dulls the image. Everything in this system has a very crisp, very clean look to it thanks to this touchscreen. The second reason this should be familiar to you is because this provides haptic feedback as well. So when you press an option on this screen, it actually buzzes your finger so you can feel that you've actually pressed that option. The other reason that you should feel very familiar with the system is that it offers proximity sensors. So right below the screen, there are these two areas right here and right here, and those can actually sense when your hand is approaching or leaving the screen. Now that the same software is working its way down to other brands under the General Motors umbrella, the screen technology as well as those proximity sensors continue to separate Cadillac from the Chevy and Buick versions of this system. Right now in the audio screen, you'll see that large Cadillac logo right there at the top of the screen. If I move my hand in close to the screen, I haven't touched it yet, but you can see that the options have appeared right there up top for direct access to the audio, phone, navigation, as well as climate control. Thanks to the screen type, the screen easily supports swiping commands just like a tablet computer, and as you can see, it's very responsive when you swipe your finger across. Back on the audio screen, browsing your devices is very easy. We just hit the browse button, and then we have direct access to our media library that's attached to the system. Cadillac Q treats multiple USB devices very differently than other systems. Right now I have my iPhone 5 connected to the system, and if I had multiple iPhones connected to the system, then the system will actually merge all of those music libraries together as if they were one large music library, and then you'd be able to browse the music library together. So if you had two devices that were essentially identical in terms of their music library, then you'd see each and every entry in this list twice because it'd be merging those two entries together. If you have different music libraries, like your children or your partner or your friend or whatever, has a completely different music library than you do and you plug both devices in, then you can see both of those libraries merged right together in this system. Of course, the system offers full and complete voice commands of USB media devices, iDevices, etc., very much like Ford's Sync product. In addition to acting as radio presets, the favorites buttons can also store albums, artists, songs, and genres, etc. So if you want to go to this particular song, you can actually store that right there on that list. And if that device is connected and you hit that button, it will find it and start playing the song for you. Interaction with the system is very logical and very easy. One oddity is you cannot click and drag a particular track if you're on it. You can click the album art, however, and you get direct access to the playlist that you're already on. Hit the exit button there. The menu button is where you'll find tone settings, shuffle settings, and the Bose Audio Pilot. The Bluetooth phone interface is your fairly typical Bluetooth phone interface. We have a full dial pad right there, access to our contacts, recent calls, voicemail, and then you can choose which device you want to pair with the system at the moment. Q's navigation software offers a 3D mode with topographical information, as you can see right there. It also offers pinch to zoom, which will be very familiar to you if you've used tablet computers in the past. You'll also notice we do have traffic information displayed right there on the map as well. You can also drag the map if you want to view a different area, but you'll notice that interacting with the map in this fashion can be a little bit sluggish. Thoughtfully, Cadillac retains forward and backward and pause buttons when you're in the mapping interface so you can continue to interact with your media device. As with many other modern cars, you can enter addresses in this system via natural voice commands, but very interestingly, you can also enter addresses just by typing them in in this screen, and I'll show you why this is different than everybody else's in just a second. You'll see how fast this is. 
And the reason for that is because the system hasn't actually looked up that address yet. If I hit the go button, the system will now start trying to find an address that matches what you've entered in the system from its database. It can take a little bit of time, however, this system will correct for incorrect zip codes, incorrect cities, uh, misspelled street names, that sort of thing, or even incorrect addresses if it thinks that there's a suitable match in the system. You can now see what I mean because the system has now completed its database search and it's now giving me a list of options that it thinks most represent what I entered. Right over here on this side you can see a graphic representation of where these options are and number four is probably what I really meant because I think I might have entered that address wrong so all I have to do is click that option and eventually the system will ask me if I want to go there. As you can see there are certain actions in Cadillac Q that are Impossible. still a little bit Make sluggish. Much like other systems, the physical climate control buttons are repeated on this particular climate control panel, but we can also control the rear climate control if your vehicle is so equipped. Cadillac Q also offers Pandora smartphone integration, so if we allow the app to operate on our phone, we can now put the phone away because we can interact with Pandora right here on the 8-inch touchscreen LCD. We can thumbs up, thumbs down songs, we can pause, and we can skip forward. We can also change the radio station that we are using in Pandora right there. As with many other systems, Cadillac Q also offers weather information. It's displayed right on the 8-inch touchscreen LCD. We can see 5 days, 36 hours, or the hourly forecast. Q integrates an OnStar icon, but it doesn't actually integrate the OnStar, OnStar right. services right into the same screen. So you can see we just have a main menu, and it's just Go a bit back. of a shortcut instead Goodbye. of using the buttons above the rearview mirror. Last but not least, we have settings, and you have access to a wide variety of vehicle settings from camera to display settings, voice settings, vehicle settings, etc. That's where you'll find almost every customization option available for the CTS or any of the other Cadillac models will be buried right there in that settings menu. Cadillac tells us that there will be other apps available for the system at some point in time, but at the moment, what you see is what you get. Overall, I'm much more impressed with Cadillac Q this time around than I was when I first saw it. I really like the way that this system's graphics look. They're very clean, they're very good looking, they're very modern and very elegant as well. Compared to Ford and Lincoln's MyTouch, these look a little bit less busy and definitely more modern. Compared to BMW's iDrive, the system isn't quite as fully featured. It's difficult to compare this to Mercedes Command because they're two different command systems at the moment. There's the command system in the brand new 2015 C-Class, it's also shared with the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, and then there's the one that you'll find in the Mercedes-Benz E-Class which is a direct competitor to the Cadillac CTS. The one in the E-Class is definitely long in the tooth. The screen is much smaller, it's not as bright, it's not as attractive, the graphics are definitely a little bit more old school. Mercedes has tried to add on certain app integration items with that system, but it doesn't really work as you might think. Audi's MMI system is attractive and it's thoroughly modern, however, I do find an awful lot of the interfaces a little bit more convoluted than I'd like. Interacting with that system is just not as intuitive as Cadillac Q. That's been my in-depth look at the Cadillac Q system in the 2014 Cadillac CTS V-Sport. If you want to know more about the V-Sport, then there'll be some links at the end of this video so you can click on over to the full review on that car. We'll also be able to click on over to the Cadillac CTS 2.0T as well as the Cadillac ATS 3.6. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of our latest videos. Go ahead and like this video, share this video with your friends, tell me what you did and did not like about this video. You can also send me messages on Facebook, send me emails to alex at alexonautos.com. You can find me over at facebook.com slash alexonautos and we'll see you next week.